I'm a man of my word. And like I said, we're gonna be going over mages today. And you know what? Mages are in a tough spot. And I'm not gonna lie, guys. I know you're probably wondering how you can do this, but fear not we're gonna cover all the progression for you hero mages and you're trying to figure out what pairs we can do throughout the seasons well i've got you covered so stay tuned for the progression of a hero mage account Yes, smash like, comment, and subscribe. And guess what? We're going into it straight away. We're not even messing about. We have all of the mages. As you can see in the game, we still use our mages, which is surprisingly. And you can see we even get them above 50, and our main ones way above 50, right? So you can see, even as a T4 player here, throughout the seasons, you're going to have mage usage, and you're going to level these guys up, honestly, quite easily. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest with you, right? So what... What is the progression rate of the mage player? And I'm not gonna lie, this video compared to the arch video will be a little bit shorter. Why? Because you guys, and I feel it, we just don't have the options. We don't have that many options right now. There's only Valen in the legendary category for all players to obtain, right? The, um, uh, the Lilia is obviously a VIP only, meaning spenders can get this hero. And obviously I've been lucky enough through all of you guys, the community being able to support the channel to get this hero for obviously video purposes for the future, right? So when we look at Valen though, this is the key because we get Valen, we get Alloin, and we get Waldir, right? And Aphius. But we are going to include fear in this ma match. -up. Why? Just because, honestly, without fear, majors do struggle quite a lot. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. They really do, right? So the way you play this game is pretty simple. It's the same as how we did it with the archers, right? But instead of going spring wardens and you want to play majors, you will 100% need to play League of Order at the moment. Until maybe the future, when there may be more factions in the game. At the moment, you can see there's only three, um, but we know there's going to be more added. But League of Order is going to be a choice. And the reason why is because you get Wildeer, and Wildeer is the best, honestly, the best PvP epic hero in the game, hands down, right? Plus, and this is the plus, you get the Flying Mages and you get Vestals. And Vestals are very strong because they increase HP, which is the best stat in the game, right? So you do get a very powerful civilization for mages, and that's why you would pick those guys there, right? So what you need to do, though, is pretty simple. You're going to get Waldir in the beginning. And what you'll do is open your keys and open your keys. And honestly, whether you get out of Alwyn or Atheist first, and I mean this, guys, whoever you unlock first to five on this skill, just use them. Just use them at the start with your Wild Deer. Why? Because it's better putting a, a five, you know, zero, 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 or a five, one, 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 Alloween with this wild air than it would be to put or so say even an atheist you know five one 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 atheist would be better than pairing a three zero 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 Alloween right just just do that so whether out of your two mages here is good you will always pair with your wild deer right and the reason you're doing that is because you're going to be getting Wild Deer tokens all the time, all the time, through scouting, main quest line, and just everything in that regard, right? So you're going to get him easy. So what you'll be doing then is whatever hero you actually obtain the most, you would then start unlocking first, right? So you're going to start working on that hero. And once you've got that hero to like 5-5-1-1, five, five, one, one, you be you're comfortable, especially on Atheist. I'd get Atheist only to about five five one one in the beginning, and then you might want to switch over to the Alwyn. Because what you want to do basically in the future is have a variety of matches, right? Because when talking about having a Wildier Alwyn match here with potentially just a Atheist and Fear, and the Fear could be anything, and I mean that she could be just. 2 one, 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 all the way through and you don't do anything to her 
until the next season. Because then next season you would upgrade her to be a 5-1-1-1 hero, right? Because of the way season reset works and how you can skill upgrade the hero. So what you need to realize is that the mages are in honestly a tough spot without Valen. And when you get Valen, this is when things are going to change. And, and it is going to open windows and doors for you because of this hero. So one thing you can do straight away, and this is the best match in the game for a free to play player, is Valen, Wildeer, or Wildeer and Valen. You can rock these in both primaries. And the, there's different reasons why. So the Wildeer primary, and this is talking about you know, at the start when you've got your Waldir obviously better skilled and you might only have a 4-0-0, you know, um, Valen, that's when you're going to be pairing these guys until you get in 5-1-1-1. And then when you get in 5-1-1-1, you can put Valen in the primary slot, right? But until then, with the the Waldir, he's actually doing a lot of damage because of the Valen. The Valen just naturally has an insane amount of aoe and march speed reduction it works really really well and as you can see mine over time is at five five three two and when you eventually and i can imagine when i eventually awaken this hero this is when things become a little bit of a spicy pick right because this is why it's the best free to play player choice um for a hero match because when you look at Valen's expertise, it says whenever a target is frozen, meaning when it's been freezed by um, that effect, it will remove it and deal an additional 400 factor, which allows you to run a actual really spicy um, Wildeer primary with the skill tree and the PvP tree that allows you to just pump out damage. You can also do the skill tree with the magic tree to just double up on the magic maelstrom which allows you just to shred magic defense before you rage skill which is very good because you're gonna uh, basically apply a freeze on them right here and then the Valen is gonna deal 400 damage because of it and then it's gonna deal the 1200 straight after so it's a really good combo all free to play friendly which is great so this is why as a mage player I'm not going to say invest your sculptures into Valen just because he is a gold key commander, but there is maybe, and you guys might agree with me when I say this as a as a maybe a, a hot take on it, but if you was going to, if you was going to invest some sculptures into Valen just so you could get him going so you know you didn't have to worry about him, I would honestly just make him a 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one hero and just leave him. So you can invest in enough sculptures just to max out this second skill. Why, guys, that 20% march speed is so big for mages. It's unreal. And you get 15% hero skill damage bonus, which is perfect when you look at Wildeer. Because Wildeer gives you, again, some... 15% skill damage. It's just so good. It just works together. It's a match made in heaven, right? And then if you ha did spend, you know, if you opened your gold chests and say you got him to 5111, use some generation of one tokens to get him 5511. What you would be doing then is just saving them. Save every single token for the rest of the game until some more legendary mage heroes come out. And you might be wondering, oh, so I've got all these generational one tokens and I don't know what to do with them. Well, you have some options as a mage player where you could, in theory, just be a little bit flexible. You could maybe go for a, a Kanara or, you know, one of these other heroes. Even, like, a Madeline would be great. Because if you went for a Madeline and made Madeline with your Generational 1 tokens go up into, like, a 5-5-5-1 five, 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 hero, and I know this isn't an infantry thing, it just means for you, you could be a mage player in PvP, and then when you go to Behemoth, you're a tank player. And it just, it's just a really good combo for you. It just works, right? Because mages don't deal damage in behemoths. Let's just be real, uh, right? Let's be honest. We're being honest with each other, right? So it just showcases like you actually have that flexibility then, right? That's all I wanted to show. So you have that choice. But what would you be doing then? So we have now in our hero pool a Valen 
uh, and then a, a wild deer. And like I say, we're going to be rocking wild deer primary all the Valen primary, depending on what you want, as long as we got a 5511 Valen with whatever this is, this could be a triple five one awakened wild deer. It's going to work beautifully, honestly, guys. Then you've still got now Halloween and you've got fear and you've got atheist and this is where things get a bit trickier right i'm just gonna be honest you can do some things right where the obvious one is always fear atheist this is like the go to march for the mage player and this is allows you to just be the most annoying harasser in the game because you have really good mobility you have insanely good range and you've got actually decent amount of damage i'm not saying you've got insanely good damage because i'm i'm being honest you don't right um but you have really good poke which is very key because you can just poke and kill farmers or you can just kill people that are just not paying attention which is really good um for this match and even through season one season two this match is always being used. So you know you're going to get value out of it. And this might be where you might dump, again, some Generational 1 tokens. Why? Because I know this is, again, a gold key commander. But even at 5-5, five, 1-1, five, one, one, she is insanely good. Because you just get so many stats, man. 15% extra attack and then the 15% hero skill damage taker reduction is beautiful when you have a shield as well. So it's just great to have this hero with someone like Aphius, right? But we've, we've not, and we've left him out and you're probably wondering about Alloin. And Alloin's in, honestly, a very tricky spot because Alloin is a, and I'm not going to lie, guys, I love Alloin. Alloin is one of the, my favorite, favorite heroes for a mage player because he honestly deals an insane amount of single target dps because that's what he does he does a lot of single target dps he targets the hero he puts um a damage that ensnares them and if they're already ensnared he deals additional damage on top and then he has probabilities that deals more damage if and of ensnaring it's just it's, it's insane it's insane right so he has an insane amount of damage output. And the way I always look at Alwyn at the moment, as in a player that doesn't have access to Lydia, is I always use Alwyn if I basically just want a super tanky match. I'm being honest. An awakened Alwyn and an awakened Wildeer, compared to like a Wildeer and Valen at 5511, honestly, this match really, really does wonders it's insanely good for a free to play player even if you just got a 5-1-1-1 valen i would rather use alloin and wild deer that's why alloin's in the game alloin's kind of that guy that is insanely good but it's single target damage and as soon as you find a hero that has aoe damage it just outclasses him unfortunately in this in this scenario right Alloin's great, but Alloin's not lost, as you can imagine. This isn't just for free to play players, this, this guide and this whole little mini series I've made here for the channel for new players, experienced players, and just players in general, just trying to maybe bounce off ideas off myself or, you know, just trying to think of something off their own, you know, accord and just need a little bit of guidance to the path, right? But maybe you're a spender right because some people are spenders let's be real right and you do have lelia what you can do and i run it all the time is lelia Alloin, and valen wildia and this this is just it's so good it's so good because you allow the freeze boys to do their work and you know what's good about lelia and Alloin? They both deal damage over time and she deals an insane amount of AoE damage and she does the Scorch effect. And the reason why this match made in Heaven is really good is if you didn't go down this build tree like I go down, which is really, really good for both heroes still because it's maximizing the amount of hero skill damage you can deal to that hero. Um, if you wasn't going down that route, what you would be going down is down the magic tree and you would be stripping their defense before and more importantly, you'd be taking insult to injury because this will give you a, an insane 5% damage increase 
and that's an insane amount. It's one of the highest damage increases in the game for anything, and that is increasing the Scorch, and it will be doing the ensnaring damage over time ability of Alloin. So it's a very, very powerful combo to run. So you could be running this combo here, which is why Alloin is honestly a perfect fit for spenders um, for their like double mage march. But as you guys can gather, if you do have Lilia and you you do have Valen, putting these two together is just the most insane, just insane match you'll ever have because you have now Valen that's giving your skill crit to the Lilia and the Lilia is double hitting people for 1200 which could crit and then the Scorch can crit and then you have more probability of hitting more people and then they get crit like it's just nasty guys it's a very nasty combo and that's what you kind of go for as the end goal the end goal is running this if you're a spender until new mage marchers come out right so that hopefully makes sense to you so as a mage player Alloin's kind of like the flexible guy. Wildy is the go-to goat. And Aethys and the Fear is always going to be your go-to flying mage match at the current moment, right? You can run some other stuff. I have a big spender. There's Hosk in the game. You can run Hosk with Indus. Um, Indus with um, Lilia, should I say. Really good combo. Again, it just amplifies the amount of damage. And it's a really good season one high spender march because obviously they might not have a Valen awakened already. So it's a really good thing to do um, if they want to just run a super powerful uh, march in the early game for majors. So those are the choices you've got. But when we go into the, the next stage, as we've done in the archers, the artifacts, right? And the artifacts are pretty simple. I'm not going to lie. And they... They work in the same boat as the archers. So we're not going to go over, you know, all the artifact stuff. If you want me to make an artifact video, we're going to do those soon anyway. But the Enkidron Advanced Incantation, whatever this first word is, I can never pronounce it, right? Um, I don't know if it's en Entridia. I, I don't know. I think it's en Yeah. It's the Incantation book. Everyone knows. Green Incantation and this thing is bonkers. 2800. No cool, no rage. 1 minute 30 cooldown. Insane. Best thing to bring if you're going to if you're going to if you are the guy that has to bring mages to the raid, honestly, I wish I could slap you and just tell you to bring even just a 5 one, one, one Guan win. It would do more than your wild deal will promise you. Um but bringing this is the way to go. It's 2800 damage for your you know, raid sometimes for spirit bangle as well. You will bring spirit bangle. Why? Dire bear. Dire bear is an absolute nasty just piece of work. So cleansing charm gets rid of the purple mist. So it's a really good little just it helps the raid out. It's a nice little thing. But that's the only case, right? So that's that's those out of the way. But you have some really good options. And I'm gonna make some videos on some soon, but magic bomb is your go. Magic Bomb is the goat of the free-to-play artifacts. Why? It's just so good. It just goes onto a target. You can see it can deal an insane amount of damage. It's simple. It's a delayed bomb. It hits three targets. It gives you a massive amount of attack. There's just so much good about this artifact, right? And obviously, when you get it, it's 5% damage taken reduction. It's just great. Like, as a free-to-play player, you want to just take less damage and deal kind of as much damage as you can. So it's really good that this artifact is just everything you kind of want in one. But, but, you got to remember, the skill factor is 1800 and that's when it's maxed out, right? So when we look at the Mage's artifacts, they have a few options. And obviously Phoenix Eye is the go-to. And you see, mine's level 3, and this is what I was going to suggest. As soon as you get to level 3, and maybe even level 2, you're going to replace, sadly, Time Bomb. Because it's just not enough. It just The level 5 um, doesn't warrant it anymore. And at level 3, you're doing 3k damage, and you're doing at least a 3% damage taken reduction because of, obviously, being a legendary um 
one. But on top of that, if you get it six stars like I have, you get a 3% damage. So you're technically getting more stats by just even having a three star, uh, fr you know, skill based artifacts compared to time bombs. So that's why I would advise using Phoenix Sight. It's one of the best things you can use early game. AoE, masses, right? Another one we're going to go over is obviously Infernal Flame. If you're a spender, you kind of want this because this allows your Lilia to just pop off. It just pops off and just does an insane amount of damage because it just allows you to just deal more Scorch. And if they're Scorch, you can just spread it. And yeah, we, we've got the synergy there. Um, Visage, again, is potentially one that you're going to use as well. So you have a lot of options here when it comes to these ones. I, I wouldn't worry about Staff of Profit. I'm not going to lie, guys. It's kind of a meme. But these ones you're going to use, potentially. So if you unlock them or you have the ability to unlock them through the artifacts, and we've already talked about it in the first video on how you could potentially manage that, you would go for these. These are the ones you rather would go for. These, in my opinion, are the two better mage artifacts um, out of all of them, right? Um, Phoenix Eye is really good, but I just, I, I think like Infernal Flames is better. Um, one artifact that honestly is creeping under, I think, everyone's radar is Tear of Arbon. I know people dislike this because they look at it and they go, it's only 800 healing. Um, and it casts up to, you know, onto four targets every two seconds. It's eight seconds. So you get it four ticks. So you get four ticks of this. It's 3,200 healing around everyone, right? Which is nuts. And that's base level. But the reason I actually really like this, and I've actually started using this a lot more now, especially the T4 player um, or a low spender that's nearly getting there to their T5, is the stats it sounds crazy i know but having 50 percent extra defense with the three percent damage taken reduction guys you you survive you survive a lot longer than you think because you're not all out about damage and i'm not gonna lie this is an, a fantastic phoenix is an amazing one right and everyone has this but the thing is i honestly when i have this tier of Arbon, I get better trades as I just survive longer and I'm actually just relying on my natural skill damage output on my match, which is fine, right? Which you normally are doing. So it's just kind of emphasizing the selfishness of your match, trying to make sure that it survives better. And when you're in murder balls, guess what? You can heal yourself and some of the T5s around you as well. It's great. It's a really great artifact for a T4 player. So honestly, just try it out. You'd be surprised, right? So when you're looking at the units, we've already spoken about them. Honestly, I would only play the, 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 this faction, the League of Order, because when you are going to compare like the mages, they give you defense, which is great for Spring Wardens. This one's not one I like. It's good for behemoth raids. I will admit, if you're a Wilderberg mage player, you're good at raiding because you're increasing any mage players, including yourself, extra attack, which is great, right? But you just get too much goodness here. You get defense from magic, um, which is 3%. You get a magic flying unit, which is very, very powerful in the game, and you increase your own HP and everyone else's with your magic unit, which is the best start in the game again, right? So this is why, unit-wise, I'm not gonna go too crazy in it compared to, again, the Archer one, but this is the go-to faction, and I hope that makes sense to you because it's just, the stats, comparatively, are just not good in PvP, right? Let's just be honest. Um, this can be the argument, and this is, a lot of arguments are made for Spring Wardens to be a good mage faction to swap into, just because you do get a defensive buff, which is good, but you actually get 5% march speed, which is very key for mage players. You get a way of getting in and out of combat really, really fast, and you can heal them, and you can heal your mages constantly and just keep pumping these mages out in the battlefield. So it's a really good tactic for you to do, and it's your choice. I'm just gonna say it's your choice to do that, but, I want to say that's it. Honestly, we're going to go over those. I've done, I'm not doing war pets, as you can imagine. I've, I've missed war pets. I haven't missed, should I say, war pets out in the last video. The reason why 
we haven't done war pets is we've got war pet guides and those war pet guides tell you what pairings to go into we even have a war pet you know list where you can see where all of these war pets want to go and stuff like that right so we should know this um this is purely on for those players that are looking for advice or you know if i've got this should i use that if i've got this should i use that and hopefully this gives you a little bit of direction so if you've got like a 5111 valen you might want to be rocking it under the wild deer unless your Halloween is awakened if it's awakened just rock these two guys until you get your valen to a 5511 you're good to go you're cooking you're straight cooking chat honestly so that's going to be it. That's the majors done. And I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. Teaching you guys and hopefully helping you guys get a little bit more basic understanding in the game. And hopefully helping your seasonal progress and your journey in Call of Dragons. And if you've enjoyed it, smash like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneaking, an official Call of Dragons content creator. And with all of that, stay safe, stay sneaky. And until the next video, peace out, guys.